spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and tell my people their transgressions and the house of Yaakov, Jacob, their sins. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahuwah, Yahweh, is at hand. Your mouth is a trumpet. Blow ye the shofar. Amen. I'm so glad you tuned in. Good evening. Thank you so much for for your uh, making your presence known to our Heavenly Father because he's there with you and he's here with, with me. And, uh, you know, have you ever uh, uh, said to yourself, I don't know why she hurt my feelings or I don't know why he hurt my feelings. Um, and then sometimes it's, it's just that people do things to you, persecute you, and you haven't done anything. You can just walk in a room and somebody just don't like you when they take a look at you. It, and your emotions get caught up in this, this, uh, these situations. And so the, the, the uh, scripture or the words of the Messiah came, that came to me saying, remember, if they persecute you, they, if they're persecuting you, they have already persecuted. They, um, if you find that you're being persecuted without a reason, he said, remember, uh, they, they persecuted me before they persecuted you. He said, people are going to lie on you and say all manner of things against you for my sake. And as you walk through this earth with the keys of heaven, meaning that you are born again, the keys of heaven, you have been called out of darkness into light. And you have discovered that as you are walking this road of righteousness, you are persecuted. Some of our young people are persecuted simply because they have the Messiah inside of them. And the people don't realize that that's what it is. You can't, you, it's something you can't see. You will be persecuted against. You will be ostracized and rejected because they did that with the Messiah and they did it with other people that are trying to do righteousness. You've seen some cases where somebody not even born again they're just trying to uphold the righteousness of the law that is in the scripture. And they are persecuted against because of that. Messiah said, you will be, if you live in righteousness, you will be hated for my great name's sake. But he said, you know, don't, 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 don't worry about it or fear not, you know. And he'll say, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Because this is part of what goes on. And you, uh, but it doesn't stop us from working because we have the keys of, of, he of the kingdom because they have been given to us so that we can work righteousness in this earth. Our job is to, is to take back what the enemy has taken from us. It's take, taken uh, uh, our children, our, our husbands in some cases, meaning that doing everything. You can see a, a, a lot of the stars are into the, 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 the wrong segment of, of what Father has created. Instead of embracing the God of Israel, they are embracing Hasatan and, and receiving those spirits into them so that they can do these things. But you have the keys. So persecution does come. And people will leave you out. They're not only will they leave you out, they will not be there. They, they, they won't help when you really think that they will, will help you they will not. And if you, uh, let me see, when I, what I mean by that is I look at, you can look at your family and you might be in the call in the ministry or whatever. You, I don't know about your family, but I know my family, I probably shouldn't even say this on the television. They think, um, some of them just think I'm just, you know, uh, 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 well, God called her to do that. He didn't call me to do that. You would think, you would think family would be like Moses and Aaron and, and, and Miriam. You would think that people would look out and be a part of, not a, a part so much as gather in a place similar or try to see what it is that they can do to help. 
I have have experienced, I don't, not help, don't come here. And I have a whole bunch of brothers and sisters, about 30 some of them. And you would think that somebody would, would, would help with different things, but it doesn't happen. So what does this have to do with people persecuting you? They will persecute you, they will leave you out, and they will not help you. But you have the heaven back in you, you have the angels that in, in Luke 15, 10, it says, for every sinner that repent, the angels rejoice. So you know the angels know your name. And so the more people leave you alone, ostracize you, the more you know that our God got your back. And not only that, that he's ordering your footsteps. And so to have the keys of the kingdom means you have the understanding or to bind and lose something. I hear some people say, I bind that in the name of Jesus or the name of Yeshua. And, and one of the things I understood about binding and loosening it is if you bring, if you know somebody's doing something wrong, you bring the truth to them so you can bind up the lie so that they will not be able to do that again because they know the truth. So when you have the keys, then you ought to know that you have heaven back in you and that even though you're being persecuted against and a lot of that is going on in the world right now and it seems like some of us are walking around asleep. It's got uh, things we should be paying attention. I remember when 9-11, uh, when 9-11 happened, it was awful. But when I look back at some of the YouTube tapes and things, this was prophesied so many years ago that, that the building was going to go down. Those buildings were going to, a plane was going to hit the buildings. And so we have to be alert and aware that, that persecution comes. And we have to understand that those of us that are carrying the word, we are supposed to be walking in oneness. We're supposed to look out for each other. It doesn't have anything to do with what race you came from. It has to do with the truth in your heart. It has to do with how you exhibit that truth and how you, uh, is your life making a difference in somebody's life? Are you bearing the fruits? Because if you are not bearing the fruits of righteousness, then you don't know the king of Israel. Hallelujah. Being born again is, is the key to enter into this kingdom. And you don't want to be locked out. It takes a key to uh, unlock this door. And being born again is the door that unlocks for you and I. And even though um, I haven't seen things that I want to see before Father calls me home, he gives me the strength that I need. I'm encouraged, even when I come here and to take this and, and people come to volunteer to help me to put this program on. They don't have to do it. They, get, they could just not do it at all. There's lots of people that they can help to volunteer. But I thank our Heavenly Father for, for blessing me with people that don't mind helping me, which tells me about them. It tells me that they know that principle, love your neighbor as yourself. And which is a very important principle. Because no matter who your neighbor is, you're supposed to care about that neighbor. If something, if they need help with something, you are not supposed to try to figure out, okay, well, they don't go to church, so I'm not going to help them. Or, yeah, I heard them cursing, so I'm not going to help them. Yeah, they staggered out of their house, and they're always staggering out their house. So I'm not going to help them. Father said, love your neighbor as yourself. So no matter who, you say, that, that person got married four times, so you know they're living in adultery. Well, Father said, love your neighbor as yourself. So if the neighbor is in trouble and need help, we are supposed to help. We are not supposed to uh, persecute our neighbor. We're supposed to bring them truth when we know that they don't know the truth. And even in that, you have to have wisdom from Father in order to do it. But you're going to be persecuted against. They're going to say, who you think you are? Or with me, they'll say, oh, you dressing like that. Uh, well, what's the purpose? Well, the purpose is that I hear the God that I serve. And although all this don't, don't, didn't make sense to me as it emerged, it's, it's something Father is doing. And he wants to do this because I don't belong to myself and neither do you. He actually purchased you. He purchased your brain, your mind, your body, your soul. He purchased the whole of you. So he have a right 
to do what he wants to do. And so when they are persecuting you, Father said, vengeance is mine. Let me repay. He said, you heap kindness. And, and, and heaping kindness upon them, Father's heaping fire upon their head. We're not doing it so he can do that. But he takes care of us. And so I thank our Heavenly Father because I, I, one day I was, I was, I guess I was looking at, at my home and, and looking at the car. And then I thought, oh my. I heard the voice came to me and said, you, no, you don't own any of this. I own everything. That's the Father's voice. You don't own the car. You don't own the house. You don't own yourself. You don't own anything. You belong to me. And so there are times when you're very tired. You don't want to talk on the phone. And the phone rang, oh, Father will have you call somebody. Call somebody. He'll say, call that person and uh, tell them that you love them. Now, you don't know what they're going. You don't know what uh, Father is going to say. No, I'm going all off of persecution. But you need to hear this, I think. So, so working with Father, is, is, this, this is a job that keeps your hands full of work. And so he may say, call, call uh, whoever, and I want you to just tell them that you love them. So hear me, I'm tired, right? So I'm ringing the phone or whatever you do, look at the phone and make sure you hit that button so it'll dial by itself. And so then it dialed, the person said, hello. Well, Father told me just to call you to tell you that I, I love you. And of course, he loves you. So that's all. I just call to tell you that. And then all of a sudden, here Father come with a message that, that he's given to the person. It's tell the person, uh, I'm pleased with her. Tell her that I saw what she did. I mean, he just giving these people a whole message. And, and it's like two hours later, you get off the phone. Do you think I'm fussing because the Father used my body? Because then he can put me to sleep and give me rest in my body. And he does it all the time. I want to talk to somebody. And that's the very person your hand picked the phone up and he's talking to them. Because you belong to Father. So when you're being persecuted, he's right there with you. Messiah is right there. He's given us over and over in the scripture where people were persecuted for righteousness sake. Remember Isaiah? Isaiah, well, Isaiah prayed for Hezekiah. I think it was Hezekiah. For uh, Hezekiah, I think he had sickness. And, and uh, Hezekiah uh, uh, said a prayer to Father. And I think Isaiah prayed, whatever it was. Well, Father gave him 15 more years. And if it's not Hezekiah, somebody in the, in the Bible. And so because he lived extra time, he got a son and that he, he uh, fathered a son and that son ended up son Isaiah in half. And so you just don't know what, what is going to happen to your life when you're walking this way in, in the, in the uh, anointing of the living God of Israel. You just know that he got it no matter what. And so if you're persecuted, for righteousness sake, it says, be of good cheer. But sometimes, uh, like me, I try to somebody hurt my feelings. I try to hurry up and get rid of them hurt feelings as fast as I can. I don't want them to fester. So I go to the Father and said, okay, help me, help me, help me. And then he'll let me maybe talk to somebody, maybe my son or somebody. So then I can say, okay, let me see if I'm doing this thing right. And then you find out, okay, well, I got to call this person. The scriptures say you call the person. But sometimes you need counsel. And I, I don't mind getting counsel from somebody. So we've been taught in home of prayer congregation, if somebody hurt you, don't hold it against them. Try to get rid of it as fast as you can. I mean, try to stay with them and talk it out. And so you can find out what happened, why they hurt your feelings. Why are, are you upset and angry? And a lot of times it's not even the way you think it is. But... You, uh, again, you will be persecuted, ostracized, rejected because you're walking in the light and you're walking in holiness and, and doing that. And I know I'm just talking again. We see in the scripture that Messiah never backed down. He never compromised the word. He carried the word. Paul carried the word when he, when he got saved. He carried the word. He didn't back down from the word and I'm not talking about those times when Peter denied Messiah and all of that. After Messiah had died and come back to let them know that he was born again. 
they, they went about doing the work that Father called them to do. And there were still some that couldn't get along with each other. That's just a natural kind of thing. You just get away from the personalities that, that you can handle. But just know this, if you're a human being born into this system and into this world, you're going to have some troubles. You're going to have some trials and some, some tribulations. When you come into this world, it is up to you to find what your plan and purpose is. We come not knowing what our plan and purpose is it's in us, but we have to find it. If, you had, if somebody had told me uh, when I first got married that I would be here in, in, in Charlotte, North Carolina, up here talking about the word, I, that would have been something that's so far be up in heaven somewhere. It was so not me. Hallelujah. I like to dance and, and I, like to, I like to drink and, and I like to have my champagne. And, and, and I didn't mind saying some curse words now and then too. And then Father got a hold of me and changed everything. Not only he changed, he changed uh, the party kind of thing. Yeah, you can still dance. He it, it changed the, the, how I had my drink, my, my, my stuff that I like to drink. He didn't take that away. He didn't say that some people, her hair will curl. He didn't say in there, you can't have any wine. But he took my food, changed my food, everything. But you know what? I love him. And I understand about the love and father because I, I had a husband that I loved. And I loved him dearly. And then I understood that, that father put him here as a husband and a father so that we could know, our family could know what love really is. What is love about? You have, you have your family. They, they love you when you're going through troubles and trials and tribulations. I'm talking about my immediate family. They love me. They're not playing games. And yes, we have disagreements. But that love is sufficient and it comes from our Father. And it comes from His goodness and mercy and how He stretches His hand out. So when people persecute us and say all manner of things against us for righteousness sake, we forgive them because we know Father's going to handle it. And when we hear you are, uh, uh, some of our Hebrew people and Israelite people and all, those, all the people, uh, you, those of you that, that don't want to have anything to do with Christians and things, and yet Christians are out there on the front line, they're, they're being killed and they're dying and for righteousness sake to get the, to get the good news out. So when we are in the spirit of our Father, we pray for folk that are out there working righteousness. What fruit are you bearing? Because that demonstrates whether you love the God of Israel or not. Because you know what the fruits are, long-suffering, kindness, et cetera, et cetera, is in, 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 the, book, in the book here that tells you about it, uh, all those fruits that sh you should be exhibiting if you belong to the God of Israel. And we can't figure things out. I don't know about you, but I know I can't figure out. I can't figure people out. By the time I think I got it figured out, it's revealed that I was way off track. So I leave it alone and try to talk to Father. So if you're persecuted for righteousness sake, you know that Messiah was persecuted uh, be before you. And it's all through the scripture where you see people were persecuted or because of their sin like uh, David, because of his sin, things came. Uh, he had to uh, fight a lot of battles and things and had struggled a lot. Struggle meaning that he had family come against him because he had sinned against our father. And so, but father uh, put in his word that he would take care of us, that he is our shepherd and that we shall not want. And you remember when Mary was, was pregnant, I mean, that was persecution. Now there, too, who in the world ever heard of somebody having a baby and there were no man involved in that? And yet it was written in Scripture. And I think they don't kind of take off, they use Isaiah 7, 14. I don't agree with, I don't know, well, some things I don't agree with, but um, it's, it's all right in terms of, to me, that was a story that they were telling in there about somebody else and it got different, whatever. I don't want to go there. But here this young woman going through her situation and, and you know, there she is and they can't figure out how you can be pregnant. And uh, can you figure that out? The only thing that I could come up with for myself now 
It's when I went to Father and said, I don't know, how could that be? How could that be? It was on the books that it is written, nothing impossible for Father to do. And so what Father told me, well, my son is formed in you as well in a different way. Because each one that is born again, it's like, it's like his son is growing. Your faith is growing. You get into know Father. You get into know his son. And you get into know the righteousness. You get into know the Holy Spirit. You get into recognize Father's voice from your voice. Uh, at the first stage, I didn't know whether it was Father's voice or my voice. I, I kept saying, is it your voice or my voice? Is that me? Is it you? And then I, I eventually graduated from that stage so that I can hear Father. How do I hear Father? You hear Father through, your, through the Scripture. A scripture, uh, it may, you may be meditating on something that you don't understand. And so a scripture will come to your mind. A song may come to your mind. And it has to do with the right thing. Uh, it will encourage you. Or you could be driving somewhere and see a post somewhere that say, do not give up. Or you somewhere over here. So he speaks in many different ways. There are times when he just walk in my body, get up and go somewhere. And I know some people that don't experience that don't know what I'm talking about. But those of you that know, know what I'm talking about. I can go somewhere. Uh, example, I went to a Seventh-day Adventist church a long time ago. And uh, I'll just make this short. Thinking that I was going to take communion with the Seventh-day Adventists because I didn't know anything about, about the fact that the Jewish people was hooked in with the same God that I was trying to serve. And so I'm sitting there, and, and the next thing I know, I'm walking out the door. And so Father will do that with me. He'll just get up and walk, and it's like I'm going along for the ride because he purchased the body so that he can work in the body. He's the word that you have eaten. He's the spiritual food. He's the treasure in earthen vessel. He's the spirit. The word is spirit. And the word is life. The word is transforming. The word is healing and deliverance. The word is comfort and love. The word makes a way out of no way that was there. The word accomplishes any purpose that Father so choose for your life and for my life. He orders our footsteps, even though it may not look like it. Y'all hear the story over and over with my mom giving me away, left my dad, gave me away. My footsteps were being ordered because that was a plan and a purpose for my life. I couldn't stay with the first group of children, the second two groups of children, because the plan for my life was unfolding. But I didn't know this. I just thought, how come me? Why you give me away? And then once Father began to open up and show you after he let you have fun, you out there having fun, and he can let it go by years and just, just watching you. Because if he had introduced himself to me the way he has done now, I wouldn't have been married. I, would have been, I wouldn't have been a nun but I would have been like a nun. That's how much I fell in love with Father. I fell head over heels and with everything that I have. And I've never backslidden. Because when you love him, you eat this word. And if Father could open up people's mind, you could see this is nothing but light. This is light. This is, Father is light. The word is light. The word is your weapon. The word is your love. The word is your comfort. Hallelujah. The word is what gives you your gift. The word opens your blind eyes so that you can see truth. And it literally opens blind eyes, physical blind eyes as well. The, in the word, it has everything in here because the word is our heavenly father. And so that's why I keep going. And that's why you can keep doing what you're doing because there's a plan for your life. There's a purpose in Psalm 139, 14 and 15. It says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And it also says in Psalm 139 that the thoughts that the Father thinks toward you is like grains of sand. 
And that's a whole bunch of thoughts just for you. You are so precious to him. Do you hear me? You are so precious. And the angels are watching you and taking care of you and watching over you. And they rejoice because they're writing it down on the book. In some place, they call it a manuscript. They got everything written down, everything you ever did wrong on the manuscript and everything. Well, we that are born again believe ours is all covered by the blood because Father said, I will forget your sin. And when Father said he will do something, he will do something. You are precious, precious. If, if you ever had a baby, and if, if you ever looked in a baby's face and, and, and it came out of your, your, you and your husband or, or your husband and, your, and, and the wife's body, if you ever, and, and it came out of love, and, and you hold that little miniature in your hand that got both you in, in its little face, or you see a nose or mouth, or, or, or you see a little the fingertips or the little feet, and you rejoice. That's what Father doing with you right now. Because when he looks at you, his image, you are made in his image. And so you are precious. Just don't forget that. So no matter what is going on in your life, and maybe that's all I need to do again is just talk. The, weapons say, the, the word says weapons formed against you is not going to prosper, but we have to give honor unto our God. You are precious, and he wants you to know that. You are precious. He waited for me, and he will wait for you. And Father, perfect in his waiting because he has a perfect timing for you to meet whoever it is he, he, to connect you with whoever it is going to help you to the next step in life. He's not going to leave you hanging. Somebody's going to help you. Somebody's going to be a door for you to go through and to help you along this path of life. And I know you can do it because Father's telling you you can do it. And he's got your hand. And the scripture says, I'll look into the hills from which come my help. Your help come from the creator who made heaven and earth and the sea. We can't say that enough. And somebody had said, I probably won't get to, I'll, I'll say this another time. Listen, may Father bless you. If you don't know the Messiah, oh yeah, do it. Ask him into your heart. That's not, that's, that's, that's not an easy thing. But you, can, you ask him into your heart and you say, Jesus, are you sure? Uh, Yahushua, come into my heart. Take over my life. Uh, take up your abode in me, I believe that you died for me. I repent of everything I've done against you. I repent of my sin. And, and, and then just tell Father, thank you, Father. Just help me. Just show me what you want me to do. And then you don't have to wait. You can, you can start. You can start. You can start early. So thank you for tuning in. I hope you'll tune in again next week. And again, even though I didn't stay on persecution, uh, if somebody is harming you in any way, just pray for them. And let Father, and watch what Father will do. You are special and precious to him. And we love you. We thank Father for you. We pray Psalm 91 over you, that Father will protect you and take care of you. Thank you for tuning in. Spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. And tell my people their transgressions and the house of Yaakov, Jacob, their sins. Blow ye the trumpets in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahuwah, Yahweh, is at hand. Your mouth is a trumpet. Blow ye the shofar.